Welcome to Ballroom Mastery. It's Vaughn here. It's great to have you on a Technique Latin Day. Today we're going to focus on the Samba. I'm going to show you the three types of vaulters that we use and how you can rapidly improve them from top to bottom and bottom to top. So here we go. So what we're going to start with. Now, vaulters are one of the most important steps in Samba. In fact, your Botafogos, your vaulters, basic movements are done at the beginning of your dancing journey, but not necessarily something you continue with. You always continue with vaulters and Botafogos, your whisk actions, and then later into promenade runs to counter promenade runs and into cruzados, walks and locks, and from there rolls, rocks, and a, and a host of other what we would call basic movements. Now, when we look at vaulter actions, there's no routine you would ever do that would not consist of having vaulter. So I figured it's very important today that we go through some of the errors that people make doing these, and then of course, how we do them as professionals but that you can apply now from the first time you learn it right up to the top. And this is some of the secrets that I share with my students. So stay with me and uh, let's rock this out. Now the question for you is, how many Volta movements do you know? Can you tell me? I'll give you a moment to uh, have a think about it. Come up with the answer. Is it five? Is it seven? What is the main groups of them? All right, so the answer is there are three main groups of Volta movements, all right? We have traveling Volta's, circular Volta's, and then spot Volta's. And so let me show you uh, what those look like. So our traveling vaulters, I'll commence uh, backing the camera for the moment. So traveling vaulters, as they sound, they move down the room, okay? Circular vaulters follow the inside of a circle. Spot vaulters, as they sound, are on the spot. Boom, okay? Now what we want to create in our vaulter actions is a couple of things. We're going to look at the feet first, then we're going to look at the hip action, then we're going to look at the upper body action, upper body rhythm, what we call rib cage motion. And upper body rhythm slash rib cage motion is the newest development in Latin technique that wasn't around in the early 90s, certainly wasn't in the 80s, the early noughties or 2000s. This started getting developed. Today it's a common thing to see, but most people don't know what it is or what it means. Now here it links to original technique. So there's a the new modern era of Latin dancing, but there's the original technique which is the foundation. So let's start right there. Here is the common error people make with vaulters, if I just find the right angle. So when a vault is being danced, when my left foot comes across, often people will get this, what we call the Latin cross, or the Cuban cross, whenever that foot comes in front, if you can see my feet, they're twisted, they're in front, okay? So the back foot's moving, the front foot's crossing, literally in front. Now that's gonna create a zigzagging feeling, you're not actually gonna be able to use your body rhythm at all effectively. So the other problem is that people cross too wide, so then they get this massive movement that doesn't look very pretty. And so again, any time that that happens, you say, oh, but Vaughn, I want to dance. I want to be free. I want to move. It's like, well, great, but technique is the freedom. So therefore, if you move big, how is your body going to respond to that? Not very well. So a tight base. Even though a traveling Volta moves, we still want a tight base so we can create a better upper and uh, hip action and body rhythm, okay? So if we look at the correct way to position our feet, so the, let's start with the right, uh, left foot. So left foot's gonna be to the side. I'm pointing at the inside of your toe. My hip will be up in the air. My right knee will be flexed. Now when my left foot comes in front of my right foot, the Latin cross must happen straight away. Now the Latin cross is simple. It's the right toe of the back foot in line with the heel of the front foot. So in, uh, in a diagonal line, I can, I can face or point to my toe. If it's out here, it can't be seen. So that's not a Latin cross. And again, if the way, my, my coach used to come up to me and I'll just do this you know, so you can see it. Now, if my thighs, see that? Not good. So this is like a plie, yeah? But she always used to come with a hand and I can't quite do this to my students, but she could get away with it. She would grab her hand and be like, Vaughn, I can put my hand between your thighs. Like, this is not good. There should be no daylight between your thighs. <gasps> no daylight, what does that mean? It means your back knee and front knee are interconnected. They land, that allows your hip action to work later on. Now, so let's keep this simple. The front foot, whatever the moving foot is for the traveling volta or the circular volta, stays on train track number one. The back foot stays on train track number two. All this means is that if you look at me side on here, I'll try to find the best angle. Actually, no, we'll go on this one. So if you look at my feet, left foot is on its own train track. The back foot stays on its own track. So as I move, this right foot stays there. It doesn't come in front. That's the biggest error people make when they do these. Uh, at, even at high levels. So it goes out to the side, then I cross in front, Latin cross straight away, okay? 
So there's no zigzagging. So I keep that. Now if I do it the other foot, right foot in front, boom, 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 boom. I want to make sure that that right foot is on its own track. So keep the train tracks as a methodology in your head for where your feet should move regardless. If you're doing a spot volta, it's a little different because it's on the spot. Now, what happens then? All right, so we've got our feet in the right positions. We've got the Latin cross happening each time. That will take you a respectable amount of work in and of itself to get right. Because if you've had a problem with your balance, your, the coordination or the speed of the movement, check your feet straight away. Now, once we've got the right foot position, we've got to think, okay, what does the body do? The body's got to do some rhythm, we've got to dance. <laughs> so what must occur then is a basic hip action, and this is what we develop, right? Now the hip action in Samba, if I show you side on, right, the hip action in Samba, we contract and we extend. We contract and we extend. What are we contracting? We're contracting the pelvis, right? So boom, chicka boom, chicka boom, chicka boom, right? That's the hip action or hip rhythm, so to speak. No sound effects. You must add in, it feels better that way. When we do a volta action, if we start off, I'm gonna do a traveling volta to the left. So my right foot is pointed. Now, let's talk about the hips. So my hip will be up at the beginning of this figure, at the commencement. As I move across, I'm gonna make sure that the hips contract to move the foot. That is vitally important. In fact, you should always think in your Latin American, except for Paso Doble, in a way that your hip action and your settling actions commence the movement, the foot does not commence the movement. The foot responds to the instigation of rhythm through the body and the hips and the, and the settling actions. So as I go into my movement, I want my hips to bring the foot and then my knees can pass, okay? So that way I keep the daylight out. <laughs> All right, so as I'm moving, I cross in front, there's my Latin cross. Now what happens to the hips? They contract still further to finish the movement. Now, as I go to move into my next action, the hips will get a gentle rotation. They'll go, so if you're going to the left, the hips will rotate rightward. See, it pulls my body. I can't help but move if that happens, right? It pulls my body to move. Like I said, we want the hips to move, then the foot can go on its back track. Okay, so remember that second track. So the hip is moving, boom. Position the foot to take the weight momentarily, Latin cross. Now, what did the hips have to do in between that? So you've landed in your, your contracted position, the hip is gonna rotate out to move you, but then the hips have to extend backward. So this is where the hip rhythm really comes out on the volta, boom. So if I do it side on, you can see I've contracted, and as I move, rotate, extend, and then contract again. Rotate, extend, and contract. Rotate, extend, and contract. Rotate, extend, and contract. Uh, one, and up two, and up three, up four. <laughs> Right, so that's the idea with the hip action. We're contracting it to move the foot. We extend it when there's a bounce rhythm. All right, so that's when the boute, ladies and gentlemen, boom, right, you get some body tick. No matter where you are, I want some body tick from you. I don't care about your age, you gotta get your tick on. <laughs> All right, so the next bit of this. We talked about the feet positions, talked about how the feet should stay in two tracks, the hip rhythm is very different to the other dancers and how it moves the foot. Let's look at the upper body. What's happening up in here where we have a rib cage? All right, so, so far I've danced up without the upper body doing much, okay? And that's necessarily a good thing sometimes depending on, you know, you don't want to be too, too wiggly, okay? There is such a thing as too wiggly. So if I do the same action again and you look at my upper body now, my, my body weight is going to be right over the ball of the left foot my right hip is up, ready to roll for the commencement of my traveling vaulters. Now, as I move, I contract. Now, my ribs, right, as I collect through my knees, my left shoulder weight has to settle into the contracted hip. So I don't actually rise up through my shoulder, for example. There's, I'm gonna give you a super tip, you ready? There's a relationship between the shoulder and the hip. Oh my lord, they are together, they are one, they are happy. When they don't work together, they're not very happy, okay? So what we want to think about is rather than the whole body rising up and down, is it's like you're a sponge. So as you go to move, you contract the shoulder weight connects to the hip weight. Then we're bouncing through the legs, we're bouncing through the, the knees and the ankle, of course. And as we take our step, that shoulder weight helps the hips to rotate, okay? Now, as I go to do my second volter action, my hip will rotate again, but what will my ribs do? Well, in response, I'll really exaggerate this, in response, I want my hip, my rib cage 
to go to the left. Let's say we're moving leftward. So as I bounce in my, uh, through my hip, feet, I should say, as I bounce, the bounce rhythm comes up and my hip is rotating, okay? And what is the hip doing? It's extending. My rib cage, boom, is gonna go leftward. So you really see this develop, yeah, at a higher level, boom, boom. So I'm using that body weight to what we call project forward. And this is a key in Samba. You wanna think of the word project, 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 especially because of the speed. It's like your body weight is constantly projecting into the step, boom, boom, hoopa, right? I want my rib cage, chicka boom, chicka boom. And then it can create a better rhythm, boom, chicka boom, chicka boom, right? Rib cage, so what you can do is you can stand here, you can do your bounce up, bounce hip and rib, hip and rib, hip and rib, right? And then you can feel, you're, like I'm trying not to move because it's, so, it's actually very difficult because my body weight wants to go. So like I said before, it's how we can conquer the speed. So I can go easily into my quarter beat and my uh, three quarter beat. So remembering, uh, there's another video here about Samba uh, beat value. When we do vaulters, the timings are one, a two, a three, a four. These back steps are an ah uh count, a quarter of a beat. So they're super fast. They're on the ball of the foot only. And as you go to the side, because of the use of the body weight, you'll get a faster action to be able to take more time coming down. And this is another error people make in Samba, is that when they land, here's what a vault generally looks like, right? They're going, oh my God, holy shit, this is so fast, how do I control it? <laughs> right, like, they got so much out of balance, out of control, coordination, and they think the speed is the problem. Here's the issue, right? The music is not too fast, you're too slow. But what are you too slow with? You're too slow with the right technique, okay? Executed at the right time. So when you go to use your hip and your rib cage, it, remember the shoulder weight is also gonna settle downward. You're gonna move that back foot super fast, okay? Quarter of a beat, three quarters of a beat. Quarter of a beat, three quarters of a beat. Quarter of a beat, three quarters of a beat. Quarter, three quarter, quarter one, right? To go into the next movement. Keep this in mind as you're doing this. We've layered this. Start with your feet, nail those. Get to your hip action, get the contraction and the expansion or extension going on. Then move up to your upper body, to your rib cage motion, right, left, right, left. Start to break it down a little bit. Get those sides moving. Get your shoulder weight to help go into the hip itself. So we're going, we're sort of keeping downward rather than rising upward, okay? As you do this, here's some rules for the three types of vaulters, which were what? Traveling, circular, and spot. As you travel, that would be the longest one, right? It's where you move, you can curve it, it can start to turn. So if we look at our traveling vaulters, we've got an so let's say we do four of these, two, a uh, three, a uh, four. As I create a circle, right, I can turn that as much as I need to come around, but my foot's still moving around the inside of a circle. When I do a spot vaulter, the amount of turn is dependent on the dancer. But what happens is the hip and ribs don't move the same. We actually, the rule is, the tighter you turn, the less the hip and rib action will be demonstrated in the sense of uh, its fullness, okay? Because you're turning, right? So you can't be turning going, and a one, a two, a three, like it's just weird, right? So keep that in mind as you're tighter, this uh, rhythm will be a little bit tighter in the hips and body, it'll still be there. Your contracting and extending will certainly be there. Okay, so if you have any questions, let me know. Visit boromastery.tv for any more future tips and training. This has been a very in-depth lesson. Good luck, I hope this helps you at any level. Uh, you and I, we're gonna work together at some point. I look forward to it. Thank you for tuning in, where I've helped you master the art of ballroom dancing together.